everybody. Hope you're having a great day. If you're new here, I'm Misty and I go around the island of Oahu and try different foods and show you different places to eat at. And today's video is on different bentos. And there are many bentos you can find in Hawaii, but these are three that I think are great bentos. So let's go. So I'm here on Baratania Street. Over there is Keamoku with the Texaco and the 76. And here's Wong's Drapery and Grace's Inn. I'm just using these as landmarks so you know, and Times is over there. But we're here at Obento, it, excuse me, we're here at Obento Rinka, and it was suggested to me by a co worker, Noel. Hello, Noel. And uh, he said the bentos are really good and they come here to eat at work. So let's go inside. Cheesecakes, gobo kimpira, oh, fermented Japanese pickles, mochi, and all kinds of bentos. Okay, I'm here in beautiful Kapiolani Park. Well, kind of, sort of. It's off of Leahi and Paki, the other side. It's not as popular and there's more shade here. So let's try out our first bento from O Bento Rinka. I actually got two and they do have dessert, so let's try that too. Okay, so I'm gonna try this first before it goes bad. It is in the refrigerated section. It is their Chirashi Bento. I like Chirashi bowls, so why not have it in a bento? Also with it is a croquette right here. Karage chicken, which is crispy fried chicken. Uh, some, I don't know, it looks like green beans with miso, some other greens with miso, some pickled veg or something, a piece of fish, looks like a really tiny thing of salmon and gobo kimpura. The chidashi bowl, or bento anyway, has chopped up shrimp that's cooked, some ahi, some salmon, and sliced egg and cucumbers. So let's dig in. There's also some um, tobiko on there. The uh, rice has a nice sushi rice flavor. Oh, and there's also some shiitake mushroom too. Mm. I will say the fish pieces are very tiny, but I mean the taste is very fresh. The addition of this shredded egg tastes really nice. The seafood's really delicious. It's not fishy. The shrimp is not too overcooked. It's got a little punch to it. And I guess mixed in the rice is the shiitake mushroom, so you get a lot of that. Alright, let's try this croquette. I don't know if it's made out of potato or what, but we'll figure it out. If you walk in there, all the bentos are prepared already so you don't have to wait for it being made. There is a refrigerated section which has these shidashi bentos or anything with fish, so they don't go bad. Mm. Actually, this isn't really a croquette. It's almost like fish cake and it's very savory and delicious. I like the seasonings in it. And there's pieces of really finely diced carrots and some corn kernels in there. Really nice flavor. Wow, I actually wish there was more of that. That was really good. It's not crispy. It's quite soft, but it's got that fried oil flavor that's pleasant. Not like an old oil flavor, but just that nice... I don't know how to explain it. It's very delicious. All right, let's try these vegetables. It looks like sliced bell peppers, some shredded daikon, some shredded takwan, which is like a pickled daikon, and carrots. I like that. That's very flavorful. It's got a very strong vinegary taste, but it's a good pickle kind of taste. The daikon gives a crunch, but the bell peppers give it a different kind of flavor profile. And it all mixes well together. We'll try this vegetable. I think I had this at Done. I didn't know what it was and somebody explained, but it looks like there's bits and pieces of miso on it or something.
It's sweet. Um, it's got crunch, so the veg vegetables are blanched. They're not overboiled, but it's still not my thing. Um, but if you're really into authentic Japanese benzos, you definitely like that. And we'll try this Gobo Kinkura, which is my favorite. That's really well done. It's still crunchy. I don't like soggy Gobo. And this one is good as well. Um, certain places I've found make it better than others. There's this strange vegetable. Oh, it looks like okra. With some kind of miso paste, just like the other veg. Definitely tell it's okra because it's got some slimy parts to it, but I don't mind okra. I like the crunch of the okra, but I'm not too into the paste on it. It's a little bit too sweet for me, but it's alright. And then lastly, well never mind, there's an egg too, but the last piece of big meat is the chicken. Even though it's been sitting out there, it's still got some crunch to it. I like the batter of it, it's really crunchy and savory. And it's seasoned really well throughout, including inside of the meat. But sometimes you get the outside of the chicken or the batter that is um, seasoned well, but the inside, it doesn't penetrate inside, so this one's very well seasoned. All right, one last thing hiding here is the egg. So we've got a little piece of egg here. I'm gonna assume it's the Japanese style where it's a little bit sweet. Hmm. It's got sweetness, but not as sweet as other ones I've tried. So I like this. This is pleasant. Very nice. She does give you a shoyu path as well if you need, but I didn't think I needed it because everything's flavorful and fresh. And I can see, you know, the quality of the ingredients here are top notch. All right, next up, I got another bento from them. This is the special of the day. It's mushroom rice with um, some fried fish. I think they had um, saba and salmon. And you get a shumai with it and the same vegetables and a piece of egg. So um, I got the salmon. I think the other one, like I said, is saba. So there's two choices. So here's the salmon. Pretty good salmon. It's seasoned very simply, but uh, it sounds, just tastes like salt, but it's seasoned very well. Uh, because it's sitting out, it's not as crispy, even though the skin looks quite crispy. Let's take a taste of this mushroom rice. I'm very interested in that. We got slices of these Japanese mushrooms on top. Rice seems seasoned with some shoyu or something. Mm, very fresh mushrooms, so if you're a mushroom lover, you'd like it. And the rice is different. It's seasoned really nicely, so it's better than plain rice. And I like that the salmon cut doesn't have much bones. The bones are there, but it's on the bottom, so there's no like small pin bones that'll get stuck in your mouth. And lastly, let's try the shumai. It looks like a typical shumai you might get in the frozen section of the Asian market. Yep. It tastes really good, but it tastes exactly like the Ajinomoto brand frozen shumai that you get in the frozen section, but that's okay, it's still delicious. I'm not going to show the vegetables because they're pretty much the same as the other bento, but very tasty, including the gobo. And then they also have dessert, which is kind of odd. Uh, they're known for their other ube and matcha something, I forgot what it was, but it's they're famous for. People put pictures on Yelp of it, but I didn't see any today. This is a yuzu cheesecake. They also have mango, but yuzu is a fruit that's citrusy, almost like a lemon that Japanese people use in their cuisine. So I figure since we're doing bentos, let's stick to the Japanese theme. So she gives you a little spoon or a little wooden fork to eat it. So let's try it out. I'm excited say that it is quite tiny of a piece. Very strong yuzu flavor. It's very pronounced in this cheesecake. The cheesecake is light, soft, and airy and fluffy. So I'm assuming it's made in the style of Japanese style cheesecakes that you can get in Japan. On the top, I can't really show it because of the angle, even with my close-up camera, that there's a little layer of clear stuff. Almost looks like a gelatin. 
So I don't know if that's a layer of sugar. But I think it's really evil to get this small of a piece because this is really good. Okay, we're at our next stop, which is right down the road for, from Obento Rinca, and it's on Pensacola Street. I've featured it before, but we're here to revisit it. It is Teruya's, and they're famous for their andagi as well. They make fresh andagi every day, and it's very tasty, and they have some pretty healthy bentos, so let's go. Here it is, and I don't think you can really go inside. All right, I got my stuff from Teruya's. The reason I went to both on the same day is they're so close to each other. I would have gone to my last one the same day, but um, they don't open till noon. So I will go there after work on another day when I have time to end the show with. But um, this is a place I featured before. If you want to look at the old video, um, I'm going to put the link above and you can check that out. Very, very old video, but um, Teruya's is famous for their andagi, like I said, their sweet potato mochi, I believe, and their shrimp rolls. So they don't really have a big selection of bentos, uh, but for good reason. Usually people that have a good product have a smaller menu so that they can keep consistency and always make things tasting really great. Okay, let's dig into this shrimp roll. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty much almost like a musubi, but just rice wrapped around with nori, and the shrimp is inside. What really makes it is the sauce. It's sweet shoyu type Japanese sauce, but it's got a garlic taste to it. So it is called, I believe, a garlic shrimp roll. Let's taste this eggplant. There it is, nice pretty purple eggplant, Asian eggplant. I love eggplant, eat it very often, every week, almost. I like to roast it in the oven with some zucchini. Mm. That's very light and delicious, um, light on the seasoning. So the um, eggplant, the natural tastes come through, that's really nice. So if you enjoy eggplant, you'd like that. Unfortunately, it's really tiny. There's only one little piece, but it's very delicious. Uh, we'll try the croquettes next and she gives you this little pack of katsu sauce if you want. She'll ask you if you want it to put on the croquette. Alright, I haven't eaten here in a while, so I forgot what this tastes like. Yeah, that's a potato croquette. It's really good with the katsu sauce. It's just really simple, like a mashed potato inside, and then uh, it's patted and panko is put on the outside and fried crispy but it's actually not too crispy. It's just nice and soft and mushy, like a, just a very good mashed potato. This was hiding behind the shrimp roll. Uh, it's a little smoky or something, like it's just a tiny sausage. I'm not sure if it's atabiki sausage, but we'll try it. No, it's a little smoky, but it's good. Usually, Hawaii style bentos mix authentic Japanese stuff with Americanized things, such as the sausages and the hot dogs and all the other things you see in a zip pack, etc. spam. So it's a local flair thrown into this bento, so I like it. Try these green beans and it looks like, I forget, I'm not sure what this uh, vegetable is. No. Tastes like jicama. That's really pleasant actually, it's nice and crunchy. And it has no taste, it just soaked up all that flavor and seasoning that they put in there. It's really nice. I love green beans as well, so... The green bean and jicama side dish is really delicious. Jicama almost tastes like lotus root, something like that. And then there's a billion chickens over there. And they're making a lot of noise, maybe, because uh, they're mad that I'm going to eat one of their cousins. But this is also their version of crispy chicken, just like the other bento that I had. That's good. It's not bad in any way. I think it's seasoned a little bit lighter, though, and not as crispy. The batter is kind of almost non-existent. You see a little flour here, but it's not 
too heavy. Although the Obento Rinka one, I wouldn't say that batter was too heavy, it was just perfect. But um, like I was saying about the other chicken, about some chickens, this one, you know, like when you get deeper into the chicken, it, the seasoning doesn't penetrate all the way through as compared to uh, Obento Rinka chicken that was really well seasoned but this isn't bad at all or not terrible it's just you know if you're comparing two different ones I prefer the other chicken. Alright so I got some desserts like I said they're famous for their undoggy so I got a couple so that my son can have some later. So this is undoggy if you've never heard of it or seen it before it's the Okinawan version of a fried dough ball and you can see it at bond dances and stuff like that. They sell them there. And I really enjoy these. They're sweet, but not too sweet. And they have a crunchy outside, uh, and the inside is nice and soft. You hear that crunch? And all that crunchiness is the sugar in there that caramelizes as they fry it, because it's super delicious and sweet when you get the crunchy parts. And then the inside is very soft and pillowy. Mm, this is so good. I'm gonna get so fat doing these videos, but it's so delicious. The last item that I'm gonna show for Turia's is the sweet potato mochi, and it's a fried ball of glutinous rice, and each one usually has flavors. They do sweet potato. Reminds me of poi mochi balls that you can find at, I think, uh, Kapolei's Mall. They have Uncle Ronnie's mochi balls, something like that. So, uh, let's try it out. Inside's very gooey, and it's got the purple from the sweet potato. So it's a very interesting uh, texture. If you've ever had it before, it's got the thin coating of the outside that's fried crisp. So it's almost like a crisp little shell. The inside's very gelatinous and chewy, and everything's sweet though. So it's a great dessert. If you've had mochi before, you know how it's chewy and gelatinous, like that rice chewy flavor. That's what it is, except the outside is crispy. Like I always, I spray my bench with my citronella spray, and so far it's been doing really well. I think it's wearing off after eating those three meals, because I gotta keep spraying. The flies are coming, but the good thing is I'm done for today. And I'll see you on another day. I'm going to combine the videos and we'll go to our last stop after this. So I'll see you then. Okay, we're at our last stop. And actually, this wasn't going to be my last stop. I was suggested to go to Okata Bento in Kaimuki uh, by a friend, Brian. And I went there twice. It was yesterday and today to go film their food. And both days they have been closed, even though on Yelp and Google it says it's open. But it is a one-man show, so um, maybe he's sick or something, or something came up. And pretty much if he's out, then the whole business is shut down. So unfortunately, I can't do Okata Bento, but uh, someone I know, or knew, <laughs> doesn't really vlog anymore, went there and filmed it a while ago. So go check out Ricky Guy Hawaii and I'll put the link in the description box below if you're interested in going to Okata Bento. That's another institution and very old school bento place, been open more than 40 years in Kaimuki. Um, also in Kaimuki today, uh, I was suggested to go to Haigoto. It's down below by Times in the shopping center in Kaimuki, right next to Sacred Hearts Academy. Upstairs, I believe, is Long's. Um, so it's in there. It's a small little shop that just makes bentos, musubis, and they also do have chidashi bowls and some desserts. Very tiny, but everything's made fresh. The service was very friendly and everything's really clean in there. Um, they have fish bentos and veggie bentos, but I got their pork tonkatsu bento, so let's try it out. All right, so this tonkatsu is pretty huge. It's a very big piece of breaded pork that's fried crispy. This is what it looks like. Hopefully you can see it. Um, I'm going to dip it in the sauce and try it out. It's a really thick piece of pork chop, but when you bite into it, it's not tough at all. It's very tender, but in a different way. Um, I've had the tonkatsu at Nanai Aikatsu up the street 
and that's like slices of really thin pork put together and fried. But this is a full pork chop, it seems, but it's really tender. Pair it with some rice. Because it's been pre-cooked and I came kind of late, it's already like two o'clock in the afternoon. It's not as crispy, so it's a little bit soggy, but it still tastes really good. I think it's seasoned well and the sauce is really nice. It's a different tonkatsu sauce, a little bit more watery. It's not as, you know, caramelized as the other kinds of katsu sauce, but it tastes really good. Some of the sides are some corn with some seaweed in there and carrot. It tastes like canned corn to me, but it's nice and sweet. And then you've got some lotus root here. Hmm. Nice and crunchy. It's got a sweet marinade in it, but not too sweet. But it's also got a little bit of sesame oil mixed in there, so nice. And then this jelly-like thing. Is it konyaku? I'm not sure what you call it. That's not my thing. Um, I don't really like that. It's kind of plain, crunchy, and gelatinous at the same time. It's kind of weird. I will say this full bento is pretty generous with the katsu. It's a massive piece of pork. I'm going to guess a pork chop or a pork tenderloin. I'm going to show my hand right next to it. I ate two pieces of it already, but it's almost the size of my hand, not quite, but that's a lot of meat. I will say though, if you're into the sides, which is what a bento is about, um, this is more of an entree with rice and very, very tiny sides, as you can see, not so many but I mean, they do complement the dish well. But if you're a meat lover and you want more of the meat and the entree, then this is the bento for you. They're very generous with the meat and the rice. I really did enjoy this. It's very tender, like I said. Um, it is a bento, you can't complain. It's not something made to order, so you're not going to get the crispy panko, but it doesn't bother me. It just reminds me of something uh, like a bougie school field trip lunch that your parents got you when you're lucky and you got something like this. So um, eating cold uh, fried items on a bed of rice kind of takes me back to childhood. So it doesn't bother me and I'm sure it doesn't bother most locals. So the taste and the flavors there, all the sides are well seasoned. It's just me, I don't really like that jelly-like thing, but if you're really into Japanese cuisine, you will appreciate it. Everything's pretty authentic. They also have musubis, like I told you, They've got um, sh shiso leaf ones, mentaiko, and different kinds uh, that you can't find anywhere else. It's not your, just your typical spam musubi or your uh, rice balls. So definitely check those out too. And I think for the generous portions of meat, and it's pretty filling and huge, it is a deal for the price. Parking is also not so bad because it's in a shopping center, so you've got tons of stalls to choose from. Sometimes you might have to park upstairs and just walk downstairs, uh, park upstairs near longs if the downstairs does get filled up. But if you go early for your bento and you want it fresh out of uh, the kitchen and fresh and hot, then when you come in the morning at that shopping center, it's very empty at that time. It's more in the afternoon when it gets much crowded. So that pretty much wraps up my bento adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. You can tell me in the comments below where your favorite bento is. And also shout out to uh, Chaka, I think that's how you say it. Uh, she was the one who mentioned to go to Haigoto a long time ago and I never just never had a chance to go there. Um, so thank you for suggesting that place. Um, I really enjoyed all bentos. They all offer something different. Each company has their specialty. So whenever you see a bento place, definitely uh, check out what they're known for. So hopefully this was helpful if you're looking for a great bento to eat at besides stuff you can find at Don Quixote or big name shopping centers or grocery stores. Uh, these are little mom and pop shops making them. And I will see you next week. Take care everybody, have a great weekend and press the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again. Peace out.